Right, so Tiny Pretty Things, the book that I am currently reading, and sadly it's going to be the last book that I read during Black History Month. I really wanted to squeeze in two more books, but that's not doable for me this week, which is tragic, but you know, whatever. Tiny Pretty Things is a book set in the American School Ballet, I believe that's how it's called, and it's set in New York City, and it focuses on three girls, Beth, June, and Gigi, and they're all ballerina, and it's a very, very competitive school. And Beth is white and the mean girl, and Gigi is black and the new girl, she comes from uh, California, and we have June, who is biracial, she's Asian and white, and and her mom is threatening to pull her out of the of the ballet school and it tackles different subjects so far i'm on chapter 15 out of 50 and we've already seen a little bit of the drama a little bit of the pettiness of the girls and we've seen sexism and we've also been having a little bit of a conversation opener around eating disorders and drug abuse. I say it like that because I I think eventually we'll talk about drug addiction, but we, we're not there yet. Um, and it is a very hard book to read for me at the moment. I've been struggling with body image issues my whole life, like pretty much since I was eight years old, I've been, I've, I've, I've been brainwashed and body shamed into thinking that being fat is not okay, fat people are ugly, and that's not how you're supposed to be, it's not healthy, blah fucking blah. And I've been deconstructing that idea for years now, and it's easy for me to see fat people as beautiful, but it's not easy for me to look at myself in the mirror and think that I'm beautiful. So it's it's very hard for me to read a book that has so much co so much commentary on weight and fatness and it's not done in a bad way. I mean the characters are fat phobic, but the, I feel like the authors do a good job of showing just how fucked up that idea is. Um, so yeah, and especially during the last couple of weeks, I've been really, really struggling with my body image. And I, oh, I find this book a little triggering, but also a little helpful. So it's, it's, it's making me feel some type of way because, like I said, there are a lot of fat phobic comments in the book uh, and, and, there's, and one of our main characters has an eating disorder and it's very, 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 very present. It's very triggering to read about. And so I, I debated DNFing the book for the moment, you know, not not really DNFing it, but setting it aside and maybe start another book. But I've come to realize after thinking about it for about an hour, I realized that it's good that I read this book despite my struggle with body image at this very moment in my life. Because as much as it's triggering me, it also sheds a light on how fucked up the behavior is. So I feel like it's it's a good reminder to not go back into that dark and shitty place. But it's hard. It's hard. And it's so annoying because if I were not in this mindset right now, I would be devouring the fuck out of that book. It's so thrilling and mysterious and dramatic and intense that if I were in a good state of mind, I would have probably already finished it. But because I'm struggling so much this last couple of days and probably the entire week, I don't know how long this feeling is going to last, I am constantly having to put it down every two, every th three chapters because if I read it any longer, I'll get anxiety. So yeah, that's where I'm at <laughs> in life and in books. 
Um, this update is freakishly long, so I'm going to try and trim it down. I'm gonna go do the things that I have to do, and if I have any updates concerning reading and everything else, I will let you know. Bye! Oh my god, driving is so stressful! It's been a while since I filmed from that angle, which is not the worst, if I do say so myself. Um, I am on my way to a job interview. I am like three minutes away from getting there, but the job interview doesn't start until 4 and it's 3.35. So unless I find a parking space, I'm gonna have to be making rounds like a dumbass because I want it to be on time. I don't know what to say. I'm doing better. My mental health is doing way better. I think... <sighs> I know I know what caused it. And I'm not gonna say <laughs> what caused it because that's just TMI. Nobody needs to know. I don't really have an update other than the fact I just, for the sake of my own mental health, I had to look for spoilers. Sorry, got interrupted by a phone call. I want to talk about the Tiny Pretty Things uh, Netflix adaptation, but I want to talk about it, first of all, once I finish this book, and second of all, once I have the information a little bit more on hand. I'll, I'll update you once I have anything worth updating, okay? Bye! Hello, so I just got out of the interview. I kind of wanted to film when, while I was parked so that I could get the better angle, but I really want to go home. <laughs> and my head hurts a little. So quick little update. I haven't been able to read Tiny Pretty Things because I was busy planning and organizing everything for the French class that I'm teaching today. Mm -hmm. And I also started watching the new edition story, which was a mini series. I am only done with episode one, but I am very, very excited about it. I will talk about it more on the last day of February, on the last day of Blackathon. But I really am enjoying it. I also watched Little, the movie with Regina Hall and Issa Rae. What? That is some golden comedy right there. What in the black excellency. Like, it was so good. So funny. So entertaining. I really, really liked it. Other than that, I don't have anything else to say. I will try my hardest to read up to chapter maybe 40. In Tiny Pretty Things, I'm on chapter 24, so it shouldn't be that bad, but I don't know. I also don't know if I really want to read when I get home or if I want to keep on watching the new edition story. You know that tumblr -y slash twitter -y post that goes something like, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you think you don't look that bad and then your camera hardcore disagrees with you? Yeah, that's me. I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, I think I just look a little tired. But I turned my camera on and I was like, maybe you do need some makeup, girl. But anyway, I I have to run to the bank and I just wanted to update you really quickly that I didn't meet my goal yesterday to read up to chapter 40, but I am getting very, very excited about finishing the book. Other than that, I watched the second episode of the New Edition story and it's getting so intense. But yeah, other than that, I just have to do my homework for my masters and I have to walk my doggy and I think I'm gonna go work out. I don't know. It's just I hate it because my nose is really runny. It's not runny, but you know, I can't breathe properly. So I walk up the stairs to the home gym and I get tired. And so I can't run as much as I want to because I get incredibly tired and I just feel really, really annoyed about me not being able to 
brief enough so that I can uh, run as hardcore as I as I would like to. Um, not to say I'm an athlete or anything. It's just that I sometimes I have a lot of things in my mind or I feel like I have to push myself harder. And this week was a week that really, really, really tested me and I wanted to let it all out by running and I can't because I cannot breathe properly. I hate it. Hello, sorry about the lighting, but I just wanted to give you a quick update before I went to class. Uh, first of all, I thought about skipping class and then I started feeling really, really guilty. So I turned around and parked the car where I was meant to park it. Second of all, I finished Tiny Pretty Things last night. I understood why it was called Tiny Pretty Things, which is great. Um, like there's a very specific line in the in the book that lets you know why it's called tiny pretty things aside from your own assumptions about them being tiny pretty things I loved it I loved it I think I allowed myself to enjoy it a lot more because of the spoiler thing that I just told you about in the last clip about me wanting to to know what was up and I am genuinely really really excited um, I want to talk about it more, but maybe later because I have like 10 minutes and I don't think 10 minutes is enough for me to gather my thoughts. I actually think I'm going to uh, write them down in bullets, like the main idea, and then I'm going to argue like this is some kind of debate, whatever. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. I thought the payoff was fantastic. I thought it was very... Um, thrilling and it also opened the door for a really really incredible incredible um sequel i think that's it for right now oh no i also ended up watching circle with my sister which is a very weird silly little movie it's about uh people who wake up and they're standing in a circle it's about 50 people and every two minutes one of them dies and then they learn that they control who dies and it's racist it's ableist it's ageist it makes no sense um i feel like that that kind of exercise we did it in my for my first subject at my master's and it is very very interesting to see the reasoning behind people who think some people deserve to die and some people deserve to live um, based on what. And so it's a very interesting exercise, a very interesting psychological exercise. But in this movie, I felt like they didn't do it any justice. And it was way too simple. And whenever things got a little tense, as in like, oh my God, who's going to die now? Who gets to live? Blah, blah, blah. The person who died next outed themselves as bigots or generally assholes. So it was pretty obvious that they would want to kill the bad person, the bigoted one, the one that was annoying the fuck out of everyone, the one that was harassing a girl. I don't know. It was really fucking So it is March 2nd, which means it's been two days since Blackathon ended. And I am proud to say that I finished four books. I actually wanted to read more, maybe eight or 10 books but I just realized it was not doable for me towards the end of the month and I'm actually not mad about it four and maybe five books are my actual average per month so again I'm not mad about it I'm not gonna beat myself up about it and the four books that I read were good well three of them one of them I hated. But the four books that I managed to finish were The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa, Revel by Beverly Jenkins, On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, and Tiny Pretty Things by Sona Charpotria and, and Daniel Clayton. I think I talked about all of them except for Tiny Pretty Things. You will have to wait and see in my January and February wrap-up for my full thoughts on it. But oh my god, I cannot wait for the sequel and I also cannot wait for the TV show I actually thought we already had a release date but we don't which is weird to me but anyway I, I'm assuming filming and production has ended and they're on, in the process of editing it 
and I think it's gonna come sometime during the fall. I actually have no freaking clue, but um, I, I've been very excited about the TV show ever since it was announced. I was doing some research because I follow the cast on Instagram, but I never really paid much attention to the things they were uh, sharing. I was just like, oh my god, it must be so much fun working on such a dramatic show. I cannot wait to, to, to see it. But I never paid attention to the characters and stuff. And then I, I started uh, reading the IMDb page. And I realized a lot of the characters that we see in Tiny Pretty Things are not in the show. Um, maybe they are in the show, but their names are different. So that was very weird to me. It's a little bit of a Princess Diaries type of deal here. And so I wanted to share. And because I'm too lazy to read an article and take some notes and then start filming, I decided I would read it with you. So if you don't mind, let's check it out. The article is from Deadline and I will leave it down below for you to check out. The title of the article is Netflix orders Tiny Pretty Things ballet drama series based on book sets main cast by Denise Petsky. Exclusive, Netflix has given a 10 episode order to Tiny Pretty Things, an hour long drama series based on the book by Sona Charipotra and Donielle Clayton, from writer Michael McLennan, Bomb Girls, The Bletchley Circle, San Francisco, Insurrection Media, Mojo Films, and Peacock Alley. The Internet TV Network also has announced the series regular cast with a shooting currently underway in Toronto for a 2020 premiere. So then we have a paragraph listing the names of the actors, but I'm going to skip ahead and read the rest of the article because the cast is sort of uh, broken down later in the article, so let's check it out. Written by McLennan based on the book, Tiny Pretty Things is set in the world of an elite ballet academy and charts the rise and fall of young adults who live far from their homes, each standing on the verge of greatness or ruin. As Chicago's only elite dance school, the Archer School of Ballet serves as the company school for the city's renowned professional company, City Works Ballet. The Archer School is an oasis for an array of dancers, rich and poor, from north and south, and a range of backgrounds, yet they all share a rare talent and passion for dance, a loyal sense of community, and when it comes to their dreams, no plan B. So already we see a change in the setting. Uh, the book is set in New York, but I'm not mad about the change of scenery. I think New York is in way too many TV shows and movies, so a change of uh, setting fits well. Also, my mom has been to Chicago and she loves it. McLennan also serves as showrunner and executive producers with Killian von Rensselaer, Jordana Freiberg, and Deborah Henderson of Insurrection Media, Gary Fleder, who directs the first episode, and Gabriel Neymand of Mojo Films, and Carrie Mudd of Peacock Alley. Insurrection had optioned the book through its strategic relationship with the publisher Harper Collins and spent a year developing the project before taking it to Netflix. Insurrection put together the creative team, including showrunner McLennan and Fletcher. All right, here we go. This is where we get to meet the the cast, the new characters, and yeah, let's let's break it down. Holly portrays Monique, a former dancer turned the Archer School director. Driven by ambition and a true belief in ASB's values, Monique holds unique power over the school, using her dark capacities not only to defend her institution, but also to bring about the best in her students, regardless of her means. I'm assuming she's going to replace the character of Morky. I think that's the only female professor that we see in the book, so... Okay. Kylie Jefferson plays Navia, the rebel with a raw talent and fierce determination who looks to rise above her roots and find a future in the world of ballet Laurent without losing her unique and fiery approach to dance. Navia is staring down the greatest opportunity of her life, a chance to be a student at the Archer School of Ballet as a last-minute replacement. What? That? Okay, no. When I first started following the cast of Tiny Pretty Things, like I said, I never paid attention to the characters and stuff like that. Um, but upon reading the book, I was like, oh, Kylie's playing Gigi, that's fun. And then I saw that they changed the name of the character. So I thought it was Gigi, but with a different name. But this last sentence, or this last little descriptor, 
makes me think that they're going to change a little bit more about Gigi other than her name, uh, which is fine. It's, it's, you know, it's an adaptation. It doesn't have to be a literal copy of the book. That's exciting. All right. Casimir Jolet is Bet, a ruthless, perfect, supremely confident, ambitious music box ballerina. She's rich but not entitled. What? She is entitled. Uh, works harder than anyone else, due in part to spending her life playing second fiddle to her older sister Delia. Oh, okay, so they changed Adele's name to Delia. Not mad about it. Also, she she's rich but not entitled. I would argue differently but you know whatever and this next character that i'm going to read about is the only other character whose name is intact from book to to tv show adaptation daniela norman plays june a sweet and petite dancer raised by a strict businesswoman mother the Archer School of Ballet is the only place she feels like she belongs. After what feels like a lifetime playing backup, she is ready to earn her time in the spotlight, proving to her mother that ballet is where she belongs. I am honestly the most excited about June. I'm also very excited about Bet and Nevea, Nevea, whatever. I'm also very excited about those two characters, but June is actually the character that intrigued me the most because I feel like we see the least of her background and a lot of her current actions. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm very, 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 very excited about the, the about what they're going to do with, with her character, honestly. The three main girls are so intriguing and even though sometimes it's painful to read about them because of all the shit they're dealing with, they're very, very interesting. They're very driven and passionate. And I think that's what drove me the most to their characters. Klaus portrays Shane, stacked and fiery from a small town. He grew up tormented for loving dance and has become a hot-headed scrapper and his family's greatest hope. I, I don't know if he is the Shane that I'm thinking about, but there is a character named Shane in Tiny Pretty Things. I don't know if he appears in the sequel, but in in the in Tiny Pretty Things he's just briefly mentioned and some as blah, blah, as somebody's ex boyfriend. So I don't know if that's how they're going to keep him or if he's just a new character entirely. Rosen is Nabil, a man with the swagger of Baryshnikov and the cold eyes of a potential killer. Oh my god. This new recruit is worldly, strange, and has a wicked technique. Born in Malaysia before moving to Paris, <gasps> Nabil comes with intimidating levels of power and potential. Oh my god, I think this one is supposed to, to be Henri. I, I I I don't know how, but in the book, Henri really like snuck up on me. Not necessarily in a good way, but I think his character is so freaking interesting, especially towards the second half of the book. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If it is what I think it is, then I'm super excited. If not, I'm still very excited because what is this descriptor of the cold eyes of a potential killer? And also he comes with an with intimidating levels of power and potential. Intriguing indeed. Gillespie plays Caleb, a lean and handsome dancer who uses his ready humor and undeniable talent in order to mask his struggles with a profound loss and a secret that could unravel the institution. Oh? I think he's supposed to be the love interest. I forgot his name. Alec. Alec. I think he's supposed to be the replacement for Alec, the name replacement for Alec. I'm I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm not sure why they changed the names. I don't know how adaptations work because this also happened in the Princess Diaries movie. They change the names of the characters even though they keep like the core of the character there. They change their names and I don't know what's up with that. I'm gonna have to do some research to understand it. I don't know if it's just because. I don't know if it's part of like the adaptation deal. I have no clue but I would love to be 
more informed. The Murguia portrays Ramon, a lean god with a deep baritone. Oh, Ramon is a former bad boy dancer turned visionary choreographer. He's not big on criticism, especially from students, which produces friction with the Archer School of Ballet and with his girlfriend and muse of the moment, Delia. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Everything about this is so new because... Uh, Ramon is not part of the Tiny Pretty Things book. And Adele, uh, Beth's sister, is not dating anyone in the book because she says she has no time. <gasps> but this is so interesting. I'm kind of thinking he could be the younger replacement for Mr. K. This sounds super interesting. Okay, let's keep going. Cowperthwaite plays Oren, a strapping prince of a man. Wealth and good looks gave him great roles. Bet as a girlfriend, oh, so he's the Alec replacement, okay, and primed him for success. But beneath this veneer lies crippling anxiety, a dysfunctional obsession with his body, and a need for physical perfection. <gasps> okay, no, I don't think he's a replacement for Alec, but... I think he's he's a new character that, that's inspired by a character in the book called Will. But Will is gay, but a dysfunctional obsession with his body and a need for physical perfection. Are we finally gonna get a boy with an eating disorder in a TV show? That would be so interesting and just ultimately incredibly necessary. I am so glad that they're doing this, if they're doing it the way that I'm thinking they're going to do it. It's fantastic. If not, I'm still super intrigued. Trowbridge is Delia, Beth's older sister and dancer of supreme caliber and beauty. Delia is the Whitlock family's first prodigy, returning to Chicago after two years dancing abroad. With her newfound success, Delia relishes her role as a diva triumphantly returning to the school that scorned her when she was a student. Ooh, I don't know what to think about Adele. I'm going to refer to them as their names in the books because those are the characters that I am familiar with. But Adele never struck me as an interesting character until the last... way later in the book, until Beth started to describe her a little bit more. And so I feel like she would be a fantastic addition, especially seeing that she is returning to the school. Salgado plays Isabel, a cop with a dancer's ramrod discipline from two tours of duty in Afghanistan before she traded in one uniform for another. With her ambition and keen moral compass, she's uniquely qualified to search for the truth of what happened during a mysterious accident at the academy. Oh... I see. Oh, that's interesting. We don't get a cop character in the book, and I'm getting I'm getting the the the, the vibes, the mystery vibes, and I am enjoying it. I am so 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 excited about it. And the last little paragraph is about who is representing who, as in the agents of the actors. Um. So yeah, that's a wrap. So I am so 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 unbelievably excited about this adaptation reading all the new character descriptions, um, the new names. I am getting so, so pumped for this adaptation. I cannot wait to finally be able to watch it, which means I have to work on reading the sequel. So yeah, that's what the last week of Blackathon looked like for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!